we have a very diverse uh, audience. We have from the Philippines, Lebanon, Egypt, and we're very happy that you're actually joining our webinar today. It's part of our uh, virtual summit. Today's webinar is in partnership with Trinity College Dublin. Uh, the title of today's webinar is Make a Successful Career by Looking After Our Health and the Planet We Live In. Trinity College is one of the world's leading universities and the number one university in Ireland. We have today's speaker, Nora Varga, from the Faculty of Science and Technology, Engineering and Mathematics, and Antonio de Linares uh, from the Trinity Global Engagement Office. Uh, the, before I give the floor to our speakers, I would like to remind everyone that you can use uh, the Q&A section to uh, put in your questions and we can answer, answer them at the end of this session and that this session is recorded and you will have access, access to all of the uh, webinar here on our website in a couple of days. Um, Antonio, the floor is all yours. Many thanks and many thanks as well to Education Baskets. Uh, it's a, a, an honor really to have the opportunity to participate in the virtual summit in 2022. Uh, as Rita was saying, so I'm in charge uh, of the MENA region. So I support the students coming mainly from the MENA region coming to, to Trinity. And before going to the, the subject, the most interesting part of the, of the topic, most specific, rather than more interesting, we have Nora Varga. I'm going to go to give you an introduction about Trinity in general and as well about Ireland and Dublin. Because when you choose a university uh, or a program, it's not even just that you want to study in biological and biomedical science. It's also what type of institution you're going to choose, what is the city you're going to live in, and what is the, the country. This is what I'm going to address in the first few minutes of the presentations before we talk about the, the, the main topic of today. To start with, let's see a very short video, I hope that it works, where you will see how Trinity has been inspiring generations for more than 400 years. Inspiration has lived here since 1592, and more than 400 years later, it's still going strong. Inspiration has helped burgeoning writers put pen to paper and given world leaders a head start. It has set the stage for budding playwrights and creative characters that will never die. For countless actors who started here, Inspiration has played a part. Work done in Trinity helped split the atom, battled cancer, and guided man's first giant leap. From here, We've inspired people around the world. But even with this proud history, we are firmly focused on the future. Today, we are making new discoveries and inspiring the next generation of history makers. I hope that you like the, the presentation. And I have to say that many alumni actually were involved in producing this, this particular video. If you like to watch films in English, the voice was Ruth Mega, that was a student of Trinity and she has been nominated for the Oscars, a very famous actress. And the music that if you recognize it as well, that is from the singer Hosier, who was also studying at, at Trinity uh, as well. If you come to Trinity, you will be following up the steps of great people that have been here for centuries. Like one of them was Jonathan Sweet, that he was the writer of the Gulliver Travels, among other many famous books. Or you will be in the same space where Oscar Wilde studied many years ago, probably one of the, the top three most famous writers in English in history. Probably the second one after Shakespeare is not at the same level. Or in terms of uh, science, Ernest Walton, who was a Nobel Prize for Physics, he was a Trinity student and also a Trinity professor. Samuel Beckett, that got the Nobel Prize in Drama. William Campbell, 
he got the Nobel Prize in Medicine only a few years ago, in 2015. And uh, uh, interesting, he studied actually biological and biomedical science, specializing in zoology and got the Nobel Prize in Medicine, which is very much in tune with the topic of today's presentation. Mary Robinson and Mary Magaris, the two only women that they have been president of Ireland, both of them, they study in Trinity. And Mary Robinson was also the high commissioner for human rights in the UN, the United Nations. Many, many important women they have been studying Trinity. One of them is as well, Sari Rooney, one of the most famous writers in English under 30 years old, and famous actors, uh, actors like Jack Leeson. You may remember him from Game of Thrones, that was a very nasty character in there, but he's a lovely guy that is studying Trinity. And now, actually, he wants to follow an academic career. I hope in a few years I have the picture or some of you as well, telling your, your story in my presentations, wherever you are at the moment, in Lebanon, or you are in, in the Philippines, or, or in Egypt. Trinity was founded in 1592 by the Queen Elizabeth I. Since then, it has been the top university in Ireland and one of the top universities in the world. Actually, we are one of the seven old ancient universities in the English-speaking world. We were modeled after Cambridge and Oxford, two universities that we have a very strong links still nowadays with. And from these seven ancient universities in the English speaking world, we are the only one that is in the European Union, and also is the only one that has a full historical campus in the middle of a major city. In this case, Dublin, the, the capital of Ireland. If you haven't been in Dublin, I invite you to take a look at our campus which you cannot miss if you come to Dublin, because it's right, as I say, at the heart of Dublin. This is the, from, the entrance to the front square. We have many different entrances. At this particular one, you will have in front of you the M Street, on the left-hand side, Grafton Street, and on the right, O'Connor Street. Those three words may not mean anything for you, but if you come to Trinity, you will realize that they are the three main streets of Dublin. This is a front square, the beginning of the campus from that gate that I showed you before. If you come, please make sure that you send me an email and we can have a coffee. My office is just on the right hand side of this picture where the columns are. And Trinity is always a combination between these historical buildings that we have been building in the, on campus for the last 400 years and very modern buildings where we carry the research that is making an impact in the world in many different areas. You may have seen actually this library because it's always ranked as one of the top 10 most beautiful libraries in, in the world. And this library is in, is in Trinity as well. And it's one of the jewels of the crown, not of Trinity, but of Ireland. In fact, when people come as a tourist for a day in Dublin, this is the second most popular place that they come to visit. It's a very touristic place in that sense. It was founded in 1732, so it's almost 300 years old. And Trinity is the only legal deposit library in Ireland, which means that every single book that has been published in England, in, in uh, Wales, in Scotland, and indeed in Ireland, for the last 200 years, we have to have a copy. Indeed, it's a kind of a museum, it's a tourist attraction, but for me, the most important thing that is a live library, like all the other libraries that we have in campus. They, this library is open to all the Trinity students for research and to check these fantastic historical books. The location is, uh, is amazing. So basically, you don't have universities with such a long history with a location like this uh, uh, everywhere. You can see there how it's at the heart of the city, but also it's very close as well to the sea that you can see on the top of the slide. And when you look at the right, you see the, the Dublin mountains as well. What about Ireland? Ireland is a country that is a part of the European Union, very close to the UK and extremely well communicated. Indeed, not only with the European Union, but with many other countries. For instance, it's considered the getaway from the States into, into Europe. And you can fly into the Gulf in, in seven, eight hours, depending where you want to go. Then you can fly directly as well to Turkey, which is a little bit closer. You can go home if you are in one of these countries pretty much for a long weekend. Ireland is not a very big country. We are talking about a population that is not even 5 million people. 
Irish people are really well known for being extremely friendly and, and welcoming. And it's the main English speaking country in the European Union with a very unique and long tradition in education. And Trinity is one big example about that. The currency is the, the euro that usually is a, a, a more friendly currency than others like the pound because it's, the exchange usually is a, is, a, is a bit better. And the friendliness of Irish people is as well reflected in the legal system. For instance, if you are a student in an Irish university, you, uh, you can work, if you're an international student, you can work part-time during the academic year and you can work full-time during the summer. And when you graduate from a master, you have two years to look for a, for a job if you want to stay. If you complete your degree, you have one year to look for a job if you want to stay. These options, you can take them or you cannot. But for me, the most important thing is that the Irish government is telling you, we are very happy to have you here. So if you want to come or you want to, to try to stay, we are delighted with that idea. As you can tell from my accent, I don't, I don't have a very English-Irish accent. So there is a very good reason. I, I am from Spain. And I moved to Ireland with the idea of being six months or one year. That was the plan at the beginning. I've been 17 years. So that tells you a little bit of uh, how easy it is to decide to, to stay here. Because as I say, they do very well to smooth your, your arrival. I believe that part of it is because Ireland uh, it has been a very entrepreneurial country, like, like Lebanon, people that are here that are from Lebanon. And they have people in the diaspora absolutely everywhere. So they know how hard at the beginning it can be to make a living in a different continent, in a, in a different country. All of them, they have relatives that they, most of the Irish people that they have in a different place. So they are very sympathetic with anybody coming here because they know how it's like at the beginning and they try to make it easier for you. And all these opportunities, the possibility to stay in Ireland to look for a job or, or to work part time is a very, very interesting option, considering that Ireland has become what is called the Silicon Valley of Europe in the last 25 years. What does it mean? So that means that most of the major multinationals in the IT, in computer science, in pharmaceutical companies, in medical devices, banking services. They have the headquarters for Europe in Ireland. And also many of them, they have the headquarters as well for the Gulf and some of them for the North of, of Africa. So basically, it's a fantastic combination if you decide to study in the top university in Ireland, you have the stay back visa option and you choose a program that you can link to those industries that also allow for many different options. If you come to Dublin, it's very well known for being an extremely young, friendly European capital. You have people from absolutely everywhere because they are coming to these multinationals, that they are very multicultural. And also Trinity itself is one of the most international universities in the world. Then it's a very safe city. So you are in a capital where you have many things to do, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about your security. You can walk on any time of the day and it's well known for being very safe. Students, they always voted as one of the preferred student cities in the world. It's a global technological hub with these uh, companies that I was mentioning before, with a very long tradition in culture. Many of the Irish writers are very, very well known. So many of them coming from Trinity, like Oscar Wilde, Samuel Becker, or Bram Stoker, the writer of Dracula, or other people that are coming from Ireland, like James Joyce. It's extremely well connected by rail and train everywhere in Ireland, and also is a, a getaway into continental Europe. This is Ireland in general, but particularly Dublin as the capital. And another beautiful thing about the location of Trinity is that on one hand, you have a very lively uh, student life with things I will tell you later on in the presentation, but also because you are at the heart of the city, you will be able to enjoy everything that Dublin has to offer. That is a lot in terms of live music, museums, uh, restaurants, cinemas, theaters, everything is at the doorstep of the Trinity campus. And very important as well, many of these companies that I was mentioning before, they're physically very close to the Trinity campus as well. We are talking about Amazon, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all of these companies, they are very close to, to Trinity. Some of them is like a th three, five minutes walking uh, from, the, from the campus. There is a lot of synergy between this industry and Trinity, not only because of the prestige of Trinity, 
because of being the flagship university in the country, but also because we are very close to them. Trinity is a research intensive university. And this is reflected in everything that, that we do. If you are an undergraduate in the fourth year, all our undergraduate, they have to, to produce a pretty robust piece of research that is almost equivalent to a master, master level. Our academics, top researchers from every field, they actually have to teach even first year undergraduate students because we want our younger students to be inspired as well by these, by these top, top researchers. Trinity is always this combination between the, the history and the, the obviously the, the new and the modern where we carry all this research in all the fields. You have two samples there of two different, completely different buildings from the library uh, to, to, this is the gym actually, what I can see there, which is the biggest gym in the in Dublin city. Trinity is one of the most international universities in the world. Like Alasia, we are always between the eighth and 12th most international university in the world. And this is reflected in everything. This is reflected in the diversity. We have more than 120 different nationalities on campus uh, at the moment. More than 27% of our students, they are from, from outside of, of Ireland, but also our academics. Our academic body, 40% of it, is coming from outside of Ireland. We are the most diverse academic body in any university in Europe. You know that Trinity is one of the top universities in the, in the, in the world, but there are things that people they don't know um, that much, and is that Trinity is also one of the most innovative and entrepreneurial universities in the world uh, as well. For instance, we produce more entrepreneurs than any other university in, in Europe. The last time I checked, the second one, the second was Cambridge, but far away from, from Trinity. And this is, for instance, not an academic report. This is based on the Pitch Book University's report that you can see there, that is made to, uh, to inform uh, funding bodies, so investors that they want to invest in money, and they can see which one are the graduates from European universities that they raise more money for their own companies in the five years after graduation. And our students, they are always the top ones in Europe. And that doesn't happen by accident. We have an innovation center that is open to all the students. It doesn't matter if you study biomedical engineering, you study neuroscience, you can go to our innovation center if you have an idea. And if this idea is very good, we will help you to develop it as a business and we can have a place in our incubator and even some seed money from, from Trinity as well. Indeed, we want you to, to succeed, to pursue the career that you want. So our career service is also very prominent as well. And we encourage our students to engage with it from the very beginning, as soon as you join Trinity. There are many different type of different services that we provide to students, supporting them. I'm not going to mention all of the ones that you can see here, but I'm going to underline the first one, the Trinity tutorial system, because that's something that you very find in very few universities in the, in the world. Every single undergraduate student, they have a tutor that is typically an academic from a different school. So let's say you are doing immunology. So you may have a tutor that is a professor of law. Why? Because this way you feel totally free to, if you have any issue, an academic issue, a health issue, a financial issue, anything, you can go to that tutor for the four years that last your, your degree. This is something that the Irish families really love, but the family of international students even more, because obviously many of the international students, by definition, they don't have relatives or family in, in Dublin. But when we talk to alumni, they talk about how amazing the academic life was in Trinity. But all of them, equally, they value all the other opportunities that they were given in Trinity that really enrich the experience in our campus. We have clubs, sport clubs, for all levels and almost any sport that you can imagine from rugby, football, rowing, fencing, rock climbing, skiing. You can, you can mention it. And in terms of societies, we are very good. And we are very good because we have been doing societies 
for longest than any other university in the in the world. We have the, the law society, entrepreneurial society, uh, Arab societies. We have societies to travel around the world, to play video games. And we have two societies that they are the oldest student societies in the world, the philosophical society and the historical society. These two that they have been for 100 years in Trinity, they are debating societies. And they are so well known and so prestigious that they invite people like uh, Joe Biden, like uh, Angela Merkel, like Martin Scorsese, like uh, Channing Tatum, and they come to campus just invited by the student. And this is something that definitely added up a lot to the experience that you have uh, as a student in, in Trinity. And all these societies, they are open to, to, to all the students. In fact, the fresher week, which is the first week before the academic year, we have like a big fair with all the representatives of the societies and the clubs, they are waiting there for you. And they tend to grab you, to, to, to have you in, the, in, the, in their teams and, and, and to join. And most of the fresh students, they get so excited that they join like a nine, 10 of them. Then you realize that you also have to study, so you can commit to two or three, that's more, more realistic. This is a brief introduction about Trinity, about Dublin and about Ireland. Indeed, you can contact any time to education basket for whatever you want in relation to, to Trinity. You can email me as well. You can take a picture of my email there. And now we are going to move on to my colleague, uh, Nora Varga, that she's going to tell you about all the huge possibilities about a, a concept called E3, among other things that you are going to learn about it in a few minutes. Nora, whatever you want. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I will share my screen after Antonio stops sharing his. So then I will continue with the presentation with, um, with topics related to um, natural sciences, engineering, and, and, and computer sciences. So oh, perfect. I hope you are able to see my screen. So welcome everyone. My name is Nora Varga and I'm a student recruitment and admissions officer here in the Faculty of Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics in Trinity College Dublin. And I will talk about um, some of the programs that we offer that um, help you to have a successful career by looking after our health and the planet that we live in. So Probably, you know, where you live, in the country you live, um, in the family, in the neighborhood that you live in, you might have noticed that there are so many challenges around health, automation, food, energy, uh, climate change that are extremely complex in nature. And there are significant needs for, for a solution to solve these issues. And these challenges are extremely complex and just knowing one subject area is not enough. And um, we really encourage our students to open their mind and study something multidisciplinary, something that you know, can solve this, this problem. So in a world of change, how can Trinity make change in the world? So the solution for that from Trinity College Dublin in 2018 was to come up with an initiative with a project called E3, which stands for Engineering, Environment and Emerging Technologies, and to bring together computer scientists, natural scientists, engineers and statisticians to develop balanced technological solutions for a better world. So the E3 initiative is a project between the School of Natural Sciences, the School of Engineering, and the School of Computer Science and Statistics. Um, besides the existing study programs that have been there in Trinity for hundreds of years, we are also um, developing new multidisciplinary programs for students who are interested in not only learning about uh, natural sciences, but also to learn about um, a bit of biological biomedical sciences and, and environmental sciences, computer science and engineering altogether. 
And we do understand how important for students to have a collaborative um, environment to study and to work on projects um, and, and, and be creative. So actually in, in uh, 2023, we're opening a new building called the Martin Norton E3 Learning Foundry with the sole purpose of creating a study place for students to, to be in and, and collaborate together uh, from, from other disciplines. So before I start talking about uh, the programs that we offer um, and, and, um, and also the application process and uh, entry requirements, I would like to show you a very quick video about the E3 initiative and, and what does it really actually mean for you as a student. We have an obligation as a third level research institution to respond to what are the social, climatic, environmental, um, energy crises in which the world finds itself. Human activity is causing catastrophic changes in our planet. And the real big tipping point is about 2050. So the graduates that come out of Trinity in the next five years are the people that will have to contribute to the solutions to these problems and we're going to do it through E3. E3 is a multidisciplinary program and multidisciplinary programs are greater than the sum of their parts. The E3 project is taking students beyond the traditional area of science of discovery and moving us towards the science of engagement and collaboration. E3 stands for a merging of environmental science, engineering, and computer science and statistics. It's a conceptual, philosophical transformation of the way in which science is taught in Trinity at the moment. Our graduates will be entering a rapidly changing uh, world, socially and environmentally. And the E3 program will build a diverse set of transferable skills that will enable them not just to contribute, but to lead by example. And that opens up enormous opportunities for generating innovations and also for tackling those complex problems that help us to transition to becoming a much more sustainable society. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that short video. I think it really explains well what E3 stands for and why is it important to teach our students to um, to solve issues that we are currently facing and motivate them to, to study subjects that I'm going to talk about uh, very briefly right now. So I'm not sure exactly if, if you are here today as, as, a high, as a current high school student, so if you're interested in, in joining an undergraduate program or, or a master's program, but I'm going to talk about all of them just very briefly. And please do not hesitate to, to ask your questions in the chat if you have very specific questions about certain programs. So. Obviously, we have a very wide range of programs within the faculty in the School of Computer Science and Statistics, in the School of Engineering and the School of Natural Sciences. So when it comes to the School of Computer Science and Statistics, I would like to highlight the Computer Science and Geography, which is a true E3 program combining both geography, so the natural sciences, and then computer science. Within School of Engineering, um, Obviously, within the engineering uh, program, we do have, for example, biomedical engineering specialization. And as my colleague Antonio mentioned, we have many uh, medical uh, device companies here in Dublin, and they are keen in, in recruiting our graduates, uh, creating solutions for, for different medical problems and issues um, that we're currently facing. We also have an E3 program, which is very new, the, uh, the Environmental Science and Engineering program, which is again a great example of how to merge natural sciences, environmental science and engineering together. And then within the School of Natural Sciences, one of the most popular programs is actually biological and biomedical sciences. And I assume many of you would be interested in, in this as well. And this is a great example of how you can study something that is not medicine, but is very much related to that. And how can you help people in your career? So within the biological and biomedical sciences program, we have 11 different specializations. So you can move more towards um, the, the natural sciences part. So for example, uh, zoology, 
botany or environmental science, but you can also move towards the life sciences stream, which includes biochemistry, genetics, immunology, microbiology, and so on. Um, we also have neuroscience, which is, which is uh, one of our top, top programs here in, in, in Trinity College Dublin. Um, but let me quickly go to, to the next slide because um, we also have other science programs in Trinity that you might be interested in. So first of all, we have four science programs and all of them have the same structures. So in the first two years, you study everything related to the chosen subject, for example, biological and biomedical sciences. And then in year three and four, you will have to decide which specializations you would like to focus on. We also have chemical sciences, we also have physical sciences, and we also have geography and geoscience. And why, why study geography and geoscience? So I think it was very clearly mentioned in the video why it is important to, to study something related to environmental science, how to, to solve issues that we are currently facing, you know, in terms of water, energy, climate change, and so on. And um, I have, a, I have a very nice story that I, I always share with students because this program is something that you might not think about when you are when you're thinking about studying at the university. So the gentleman on the picture, um, he's unfortunately not a Trinity graduate, but he studied um, geography and geolo geology in, in the United States a few years back. His name is Harrison Jack Smith. And he was a, ge a geologist and he was working as a geologist. And when NASA was uh, recruiting the crew members for Apollo 17, they needed someone who is not an astronaut, but who is someone who understand geography and geology and he was recruited to be a member of of Apollo 17 and was sent up there and and he was the one who actually took that picture that is also on the screen of the earth and I'm sure that you saw this picture um, in one of your geography books uh, during your studies it's called the blue marble and it's very well used to to show how the earth uh, looks like so again if you study uh, geography and geoscience, you have a wide range of career opportunities, working in academic industry research and teaching, um, work in environmental engineering, geological consultancy, work in mineral, mineral exploration and hydrocarbon industry. So if you're, you're uh, currently based in um, the Middle East, for example, this course could be very, very useful for you if you're interested working in, in the oil industry. You can also work in environmental planning, overseas development and governments, or you can also be an astronaut and, and work as a geologist on, on certain projects with NASA, for example. And just very briefly on our environmental science and engineering program, I, as I mentioned, this is a flagship program for our E3 initiative, and it's a great example how students are combining uh, modules both from engineering and also from natural sciences um, and then later specializing in one of them, uh, depending on, on their interest. And now moving to our postgraduate programs within the faculty. Again, we have a very wide range of programs and we, I would like to highlight just a few of them. Um, first of all, one would be the MSc in Environmental Sciences course that is again very much focusing on to understanding environmental issues, challenges and how to manage them and to understand environmental policies and legislation. And this course really builds on practical and theoretical courses. Um, students go on, on a field trip each spring. I think the students were there last uh, year to really um, learn everything that they studied in the previous semester is in, in a practical way. And the subjects include a wide range of subjects in, in the discipline and students have the flexibility to choose a research project that they are really much interested in. Um, and we have professors who are very well known in, in this area and they are very happy um, for, for, for students to, to support them and, um, and, and really discover areas that might be a bit untouched in, in the field and, and a bit more innovative. And another flagship program of the E3 initiative is the Smart and Sustainable Cities program, which is extremely multidisciplinary. It brings in modules from computer science and statistics, 
engineering and natural sciences. And it's really one of the first programs um, in the world that brings together all these disciplines together. And it really helps to, to develop uh, and teach our, our graduates tools of urban, urban geography and how to make city or, 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 or a town living more sustainable how to overcome issues that we're currently facing with. So definitely, if you are currently an undergraduate student and if you're looking for um, a course similar like this, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We welcome students from a wide range of backgrounds. So even if you don't have an engineering background, for example, um, you can definitely uh, have the opportunity to, to be enrolled in, in one of these programs. So bringing us back to the original question, um, it is our hope that everything that I've just outlined helps you to understand just a little bit um, about how in a world of change, um, Trinity is doing its part to make positive changes in the world. And I hope that by you joining Trinity, hopefully in the future, you will be part of, of this, this change by studying one of the programs that uh, I mentioned before. Speaking of joining Trinity, uh, now I would like to talk about just very briefly on, on entry requirements and the application process. So I'm not sure exactly, you know, what is your current academic background. So, it, so the admission process and admission requirements will really depend on that. But if you are studying the local curriculum in your country, so if you're not studying an international curriculum, you might have to go through our um, International Foundation Program, which is a one-year course preparing you for the, the program that you are choosing. And after completing this one-year course, you are automatically progressing into the degree program that you, that you choose. When it comes to direct entry requirements to the, the, the degree programs, again, it will really depend on your qualification. Uh, we accept a wide range of international qualifications. And um, as you can see, we have a band system. So most of the courses that I mentioned, uh, they are in either band three or band two. So for example, if you are currently doing um, an IB, you will need either uh, uh, 30 or 33 points. We also accept A-levels and we also accept the American curriculum um, and, and many other international curriculums. Um, if you have any questions about, about um, entry requirements, please feel free to, to reach out to us and we are very happy to provide more information. Um, we also require proof of English proficiency. You can see the, the requirements below. If you are following some of the international curriculum, you actually might be exempted from providing proof of English proficiency. Again, we are happy to clarify that for you at a later stage. And if you are interested in um, joining our postgraduate program, uh, we usually require a 2.1 honors degree or equivalent. Um, and some courses might have higher uh, entry requirements, but um, I don't think that any of the programs that I've been talking about requires a first class degree. Um, some of the programs, uh, particularly in, in uh, computer science and some of the engineering programs, they do have a programming test as part of the admission process or an interview, an online interview that shortlisted students uh, have to uh, take part of. And we also require proof of English proficiency. Again, if you have completed your studies in English, for example, at your university, you might be uh, exempted from providing uh, IELTS or TOEFL. Before I go to the fees uh, and finishing the presentation, I would like to mention that uh, the application process is, in my opinion, extremely easy. Um, it's directly on the Trinity website. So we don't use a centralized system like in the UK. So all the application has to be submitted directly to Trinity. If you are in, if you are an international student, um, and if you are still if you're interested in joining us in September 2022, we have enrolling admissions for most of our programs until June uh, 2022. So please feel free to reach out to us or Education Basket if you wish to learn more about the application process. You can see the non-EU tuition fees here on on uh, the screen. So. Um, 
when it comes to undergraduate fees, if you are interested in the programs that I mentioned, so everything related to science, technology, engineering, um, or even health sciences, for example, that will be around 27,000 euro per year. If by any chance you're here today and you're interested in business or humanities, uh, psychology and so on, that will be around 20,000 euro per year. And then the postgraduate programs for the for the, the STEM programs would be around 25,000 euro. In addition to the tuition fees, we always advise students to calculate with approximately 15,000 euro per year um, that will cover all the living expenses, including accommodation, food, transportation, insurance, and, and many other um, expenses. And lastly, I would like to talk about um, some of the scholarships that we offer for um, international students. So first one I would like to very much highlight for you is the E3 Balanced Solutions for a Better World Scholarship that is specifically for the programs that I just mentioned in our faculty. And this is a dedicated scholarship for you if you're interested in joining. Um, for undergraduate students, it's valued between 5,000 euro or 16,000 euro for the duration of their studies. And for postgraduate students, it's also valued between two and 5,000 euro, and it's applied as a uh, reduction from the tuition fees. We also have the Global Excellence Scholarship, which is very similar to the E3 scholarship I just mentioned, and the Foundation Scholarship that has nothing to do with the Foundation Program. It's, uh, it's called Foundation Scholarship because it's there since the foundation of Trinity, and it's a very prestigious scholarship. Um, so in your second year of your studies, you're invited to take an exam, which is related to your studies. And if you perform very well on that exam, then you will be chosen as a scholar um, and you will receive a scholarship, a very generous scholarship for five years, um, also free accommodation on campus and also free meal on campus in our very, very beautiful dining hall, which, uh, which is really like from a Harry Potter movie. So that would be my part of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed that and you understand the E3 initiative a little bit better and what we offer at Trinity um, in, in the field of uh, science, engineering and, and technology. So thank you so much again. Uh, you can see my email address and Antonia's email address on the screen and you can always reach out to Education Basket if you wish to learn more about Trinity, the programs you offer and the, the application process. And you can also scan the QR code on the screen where you can register your interest. So just to make sure that you don't miss any updates in terms of scholarships or application process. So thank you again. And I think now we have some time for um, a Q&A session. Yeah. Thank you, Noora, for the presentation. I actually have one question uh, regarding uh, the master's degree admissions requirement. You mentioned that is 2.1. Could we clarify based on the US system GPA, uh, what is equivalent of 2.1 uh, so, to the yeah. US? Very good question. So that would be a 3.2 minimum requirement um, in the US system. So 3.2 out of four. Perfect. Uh, and I also, think also one one thing really that yes, uh, when the three point two is the, the 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 minimum in general, many programs they can be more competitive. And at the same time, we need actually to see specifically where is the country that you have studied your degree, because sometimes there are a little bit of exceptions, and you may have a case. Not in many countries, but some countries, depending on the university, they may be a three point zero. The same way that some of them they can be higher than three point two. But the three point two is a is a good idea. Thank you. We actually have one uh, question. Um, I I asked is same as master student for the cost. Could we put out the, the tuition fees for the masters? Uh, for the postgraduate degrees again for Aria. Just a second. Yeah, here it is. So obviously 
th there's a range when it comes to the tuition fees for master's students. If you're interested in, in one of the programs I just mentioned or master's related to health sciences, for example, uh, or anything related to science, technology, and so on, that would be around 25,000 euro for the master program. Most of our master programs are one year full time. Um, so the whole tuition fee will be around 25,000 euro. And I believe if you are interested in some of the um, humanities masters, for example, in history or, or law, maybe that would be at a, at a lower end of, of, the, of the scale. Thank you. And just to mention that obviously at Trinity, you know, we are a very comprehensive university. So it's it's very easy to mention the programs that we don't have <laughs> compared to the programs that we have. So if you are interested in any programs that were not mentioned today, please reach out to, to us or to Education Vescus um, to, to chat about the options that, that you might be interested in. I believe really that we can leave everything our emails in the chat box. But uh, to say to everybody, anyway, that you're in a very safe hands with education baskets. So I, we are giving out our emails, but really, if you contact them, they will give you the full support about everything. And we are in touch very regularly as well to, to, to provide you the, the, the best of the help that we can. Mm -hmm. And indeed, we are always open as well, because the, the decision to choose a, a, a university is very exciting. Uh, program, but it can be also very challenging. So even though you may not have any doubts now, when you come a little bit closer to, 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 to travel and to make up your mind to study abroad, you'll have questions coming up to you all the time. So be sure that you you, you keep in touch. Mm -hmm. I got to leave my email there as well. Mm -hmm. But as I said, if you have the contact of education basket, you don't need much more. Thank you, Antonio. Okay, Lydia, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to, to your students from, from everywhere. I, try, I, try, I see that we have also people from Algeria that I didn't mention before, but yeah. and Tunisia very as well. to have them. And Tunisia. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us and hopefully we see you in the next webinar that we're holding. Uh, I also added in the chat box our contact details and our uh, social media details so you can follow up on our all our events. Please don't hesitate to contact and have a lovely rest of the day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.